Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to our IEEE VR 2022 presentation on audience experiences of a volumetric virtual reality music video. My name is Gareth and I'm a research fellow on the vSense project at Trinity College Dublin. Today I'm going to talk about our pilot study that asks, are users concerned about the attractiveness of volumetric music video content as well as the pragmatic and hedonistic qualities? And what are the latent needs and emotions of audiences and what are the problems they face? With the rise and fall in popularity of music videos over the last few decades and the influence of personal tastes during those times, the form and function of music videos has also been in a constant state of flux. It is therefore no surprise to us that musicians that can adapt to change in musical styling can also deem it necessary to release immersive media for fans to explore their music in new and innovative ways. In our paper, we first posed the question, what is your favorite music video? And in response, I'm sure you all have various answers depending on the decade you were born. Feel free to drop a comment or a link to your favorite music video below. In more recent times, we're seeing a resurgence of extended reality technologies, as well as the use of 3D volumetric reconstructions in traditional media formats. This constant change in media formatting and consumption means that we are presented with music videos that continue to shift and transform in new and inventive ways. At the time of this presentation, examples of these 3D reconstruction techniques in music videos can be seen in Billy Corgan's Aeronaut and Tino Kamal's VIP. However, we predict that more examples of volumetric music videos will be available in the near future. With all of these changes and the ebb and flow of audience tastes, in our paper, we take stock of the current market to capture audience responses to such materials that are available today and try to articulate these findings to inform new working approaches to designing and delivering volumetric music videos. For our experiments, we chose the track Not Get from Bjork's Volnikura album, as it demonstrated several excited volumetric features. Firstly, the genre of music would be accessible to most music listeners, whilst the track would also remain relatively unknown. We could also view two different professionally produced visual interpretations of the track, one as a traditional screen-based music video, and two as an immersive virtual reality experience. In this experiment, we compared a traditional TV viewing platform with an immersive VR experience. Therefore, in a random order, the participants watched the 2D and 3D version of the track not get and reflected upon this experience via previously validated questionnaires and open-ended questions. In late 2021, we sought volunteers from Dublin, Ireland. Due to COVID restrictions, we could only safely process 13 participants before another lockdown prevented further testing. We categorized our participants as novices, end users and advanced users by applying a user cube approach. It's also worth noting that the average age of the cohort was 30 years old. After experiencing both scenarios, we asked our participants which platform they preferred and why. In this case, the group was evenly split between viewing via a traditional TV screen and a VR device. A thematic analysis of responses to why revealed that participants talked about their visual understanding and familiarity with TV screen media as a more traditional format. On the other hand, those who liked the VR platform more talked about immersion and its unique affordances in live music performance. When asked to evaluate the VR experience, which is the focus of our current work, the participants rated the platform's attractiveness, perspicuity, stimulation and novelty highly. However, the perceived efficiency and dependability of VR were rated lower. These measures indicated that users applied unnecessary effort during the VR experience and did not feel securely or predictably in control of the interaction. Finally, we asked the group to report on their previous experiences of volumetric video in VR, their thoughts on improving future VR music videos, and the advantages and disadvantages of using VR in musical performance. Via a thematic analysis, we discovered that this particular cohort displayed varied previous experiences with volumetric video and different forms of creative VR uses. They also expressed that they had previously accessed these types of materials across multiple devices. The most common improvement that VR music videos could make to the music scene was the accessibility of live performance and its ability to reach wider audiences. Following this, it was suggested that these types of digital media could bring an increased level of intimacy to remote or telepresent live performance. Moreover, the impact of the Uncanny Valley effect was raised as another potential area for improvement. 
The advantages and disadvantages of VR music videos presented several core themes, highlighting the importance of live musical experiences, the audience's perspective, the performer's perspective, current industry trends, and the way technology is presently being used in general. These user-identified factors will provide a foundation for our future work in creating quality volumetric music video experiences, including the use of narrative experiences that support first-person perspectives. Our concerns highlighted the potential conflict between conventional linear narratives and those that allow freedom of exploration, such as are afforded in VR. We also acknowledge that our participant group was somewhat small, gender-weighted, and contained more advanced users than novices. Therefore, we proceed with some caution to highlight the specific qualities that audiences seek whilst consuming such materials. Still, we move forward to designing and creating a new volumetric music video experience with the Irish band New Pagans and plan to conduct broader, more inclusive user studies with these materials in the future. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this presentation, and we hope you gain more insight from reading our paper. We look forward to hearing any questions you may have during the conference and welcome you to follow our updates on this project via our website and social media channels. Thank you.